today we are going to be looking at uh, delays and how to model them in system dynamics what it means. So, delays exist in almost all the systems. Uh, some delays create instability in oscillation, others filter out unwanted variability within the system so that we can get rid of the short term variability and look at the long term performance or remove uh, noise from the signal. So, these are uh, the essential aspect in all the systems. In whatever process we take, there will be some form of delay which, uh, which is inherent part of all the systems. But if you just think about it in modeling perspective, delays are nothing but where the output lags behind its input by some time duration, right, whatever it may be. Uh, so, that is a very simple definition of a delay. So, broadly speaking, we can think of uh, two types of delays. One is called as a material delay, which captures a physical flow of uh, materials. For example, if um, say we send in raw materials into the factory, after a time delay of say 2 days, it comes out as a finished product. As raw material comes in, maybe after 2 days, it comes out as a car. So, there is a delay and there the material is conserved. So, whatever material goes in, it either comes out as a finished product or as a scrap, right. So, there is a kind of a mass balance or you can think of uh, say uh, uh, letters that is being posted say through courier or postal service. So, whatever goes into a system then remains in transit for some duration after end of it which it is delivered. So, those are material delays where the material gets conserved. Uh, and um, or when you send an application for uh, say applying for IIT, your application was a physical material, it went to the admissions office, it stayed there for some time, many different people would have processed it and then finally, you would have got some response to that, correct. So, those are also material delay or when you finish an exam, you give the exam papers to me, then I have to grade the papers and give it back. So, even those are also considered as material delay. So, material does not mean it has to be a physical you know uh, object or anything, it can also be like an order or uh, the exam papers etcetera. So, those are also uh, material delay or the act of sending an email. So, when you send an email, assume we nothing is lost, but uh, after some delay the material gets read. So, until you read it the material is in your inbox, even after that it can go into your archives or it continues to remain until you delete it, right. So, there also the material is conserved. So, those are all considered as part of a physical flow of materials. So, I am just uh, having a very broad description of the physical flow. The second kind of delay is called as a perception delay or information delay, which represents a gradual change in perceptions and beliefs. I mean change in beliefs is going to take time. So, these kind of delays are called as perception delays or uh, information delays or uh, delays of uh, beliefs. Uh, this is also quite interesting given a certain people's background they will have certain kind of uh, uh, kind of perception about things. You cannot just pass a law and make it change overnight, it takes some time for it to gradually change in especially in social customs. Uh, another uh, more uh, related information delay could be how you process whatever has been taught in class, right. It takes time to absorb it if at all at some point some amount gets absorbed, uh, it takes some time to retain it and over time that can also you tend to forget. You know, like. So, those are called as information delay. So, there there is no conservation of mass, it cannot be like you know I taught you so much hours of material and that much hours get stored in memory, it does not happen like that, right. It is a maybe some few abstract pieces of information that get stored which also erodes or gets updated over time when you get new information, you process new information and the old one either gets replaced or reinforced or you just forget them. So, those kind of perceptions is what we call as information delay. Some form of both you might have seen in other courses also. So, today's class we will start with the material delay which is kind of more easy to grasp and handle, we will get a hang of that. So, material delay. So, when you look at material delay, essentially in modeling and system dynamics uh, method, we consider two things. One is average delay time, other is distribution of deliveries or output around this mean delay. Like uh, as I told the example of uh, sending letters, 
I send letters and after a delay of say a week or a week, suppose all the letters are delivered exactly at the same time, then I know that there is a fixed delay, right. But it does not happen so. Sometimes when I post a letter today, some letters get delivered after 3 days, some after 4 days, some after 5 days, right. So, there is a distribution around this average time of uh, delay. So, those are two things that we want for modeling the delays. What is that average time and what is the distribution around that average time that we expect and based on that we will be choosing the kind of models we want around that. Let us take the simplest case saying that where output lags behind its input by a fixed and a constant duration. We call that as a pipeline delay. So, whatever you send in at this end of the pipe comes out at the other end of the pipe the same quantity after fixed duration. Uh, so, it is very common in uh, like say an assembly line kind of setup where material is sent and after a time a finished product comes out whatever the time scale might be. An order of exit from delay is also same as order of entry delay times are constant. So, this is one of the simplest uh, model. So, let us do delays as a topic. Let us consider a uh, uh, simple uh, pipeline delay. We represent it as, so imagine again uh, letters being posted. So, so, we can consider it as material in I drew a two small box, but you can correct it is in is your outflow average delay time. D. So, we are going to be using capital D for the average delay time throughout. So, input is kind of exogenous. So, whatever it can be material in transit is nothing but the difference of the flows. So, only equation of concern is what is this output. So, output time t is nothing but inner time t minus d. Okay. It is a very simple uh, equation output lags behind input after d time periods so in wensum if you want to model it we can't write these equations as you have might have observed in wensum there is no way to give it subscript of time t time t is taken as implicit so they have defined uh, functions for that so uh, if you want to uh, model this in Wensum, out we simply model as there is a function called as delay fixed, it takes as parameters in d time. and in it there is in mean in refers to your uh, inflow or the input dt is your uh, delay time d delay duration and in it is the initial value of output when time is less than d or the delay duration. So, these are two or three uh, input parameters for this function which fully captures this. So, now internally what Wensum will do is do the same equation output is in, in of t minus d where d is your uh, delay duration and in 
the first you are in here which is uh, same as the in here this is a variable name and in it is initial value if you observe the equation when um, t is less than d it becomes negative so we need to know what happens when t is less than d so that is also specified in Vensum as what is the initial value typically we take it as 0 that means there is no output until actually input starts working so there is a simple lag so if you want to make write a proper equation so this works when t is greater than or equal to d uh, yeah that is it. It is quite simple to visualize your uh, uh, flows. For example, if there is a assume a pulse input at uh, say time 0, at time 0 there is a pulse input and assume there is a let d equal to say 5 that means at after 5 periods the entire thing is going to come out as an output. So, this becomes your out, but this pulse input is your in. It is very simple uh, delay. So, whatever you are going to put in is going to come out. So, whatever profile it comes here, this is going to be offset by d time units, and the same profile is going to come out after uh, d time units for the output. So, we we'll look at few types of delays, then we can move to Vensum for uh, trying it out. So, it is not that difficult to look at it. So, this is what we have seen. So, this is one extreme where whatever you give after time delay starts coming out. We can take the other end of the spectrum, a kind of delay which we have already seen. So, since we are looking at delay, I am introducing it as a first order material delay. What you are saying is in this case, output is proportional to the stock. So, assume that whatever inflow occurs, the stock is mixed perfectly. The analogy here is. Uh, again the same water tank. So, in this water tank as you can see there is inflow happen and suppose there is a tap below it is not water is not going to follow first in first out policy as soon as it comes it is going to be assume there is also a mixer which keeps mixing it. So, water is going to just come out almost instantaneously as long as inflow started immediately outflows will also start and tank will continue to drain uh, in this model. This is nothing but a simple first order model that we have already seen you know when there is a outflow which is proportional to the inflow and uh, stock in hand. Uh, so, tank is going to keep draining until the entire tank is drained right. So, that uh, simple first order uh, negative feedback system is also called as a first order material delay. We will do the Vensum one and couple of questions we can think about if, if it is a first order material like a first order negative feedback system. So, what are inflow occurs and it system starts draining almost instantaneously. So, what time does the maximum value of stock occur it will be at time 0 it will be at the initial point how long on an average it spends 